And we're back. We're back in studio. In studio. High quality. Quality, sound, lights, camera, action, and coming on. We're, we're just a little behind peek behind the, the curtain here. Thursday night action, which we almost never do. Oh, I can't believe you told them, Andrew. Yeah, I wanted to tell them because I have this idea. So Johnny texted me and he's like, hey, you know, I want to watch the debate on Tuesday. What if we record yeah. on a different night? So I was like, great. He's like, are you going to watch it? I said, I'm too nervous. Do not want to. Oh, that's, right. that's right. That's <laughs> right. It's not even nervousness. It's uh, I think it's called secondhand anxiety. So it's like where you you feel for like for I think Kamala? With, yeah, Kamala, yeah, or Trump, be honestly, like just like they're up there, it's so exposed, there's so much pressure on them, and then you feel like, oh god, oh god. It's kind of like how I imagine people watch like an open mic and, and stand up when they don't know that everyone like we're so exposed to it, it means nothing to us. It's fun to watch people right. bomb, it's yeah. hilarious. We know yeah. it, but like, I feel like open mic audiences want to crawl out of their skin, right? Because it's so uncomfortable. That's how yeah. I feel watching those debates. But apparently she did very well. Yeah, it started out and it seemed like, oh, she's a little nervous. But then quickly she realized, oh, okay, this is, this guy is very easily manipulatable. Well, that's manipulatable. Yeah. That's got to be a word. Hey, <laughs> so I was thinking <laughs> that's what I read about it was that what she did was like they would ask her about immigration, but then in her immigration answer, instead of like answering the question, she would like just throw in some some bait for Trump. Like she would go, uh, oh, his rallies. Oh, you should go to his rallies. They're boring and people are walking well, that's out. What she, that's what she and then, did. I don't know. So really, I remember the question, but that's that was how that was all it took. And then instead of talking about his like big issue, immigration, he couldn't help it. And he would talk about. So I want to do uh, this. I'm going to use the Kamala debate strategy on Johnny Beaner. So ask me a right. question about anything in the world. And then uh, about anything in the world. Well, yeah, or just like any issue. Was it was it like any sort of world issue? Okay. As if I and it, but this is as if I was. Oh, as if you're running for president. For president, and you're and I'm running against Johnny B. Oh, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. So you're the moderator, and you're the my opponent. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now this next question is for Andrew. Uh, Andrew, there is uh, a lot of people talking about this climate change coming. Uh, what plan? What specific plans do you have for climate change? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. You know, and it's funny. It reminds me of uh, how you know hot dogs are disgusting. Have you ever tried a hot dog? They're gross. Hey. They're not even good for you. And also, counting crows, boy, they suck ass. Anyway, so oh, yeah. if you're really worried about climate change, let's ban hot dogs and ban counting crows. Okay. Do I get a chance to respond? Can I respond? Can I respond to that? Okay. First of all. You, maybe you had a bunch of bad hot dogs, but hot dogs are not the enemy. Okay. You're the enemy. You're stupid. Okay. Counting crows. There isn't a better band in the world than counting crows. <laughs> and I'm the genius. <laughs> I've manipulated my opponent. Oh, it, it was great. It was great. Not to reveal who I'm voting for, but it was so fun when she was like, you know what? I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you, the viewer to go do that. Go to, go to a Trump rally. Go to a Trump rally because it's really something to see. Yeah. You here's what you'll see. You'll hear him talking, telling stories of imaginary characters, talking about Hannibal Lecter, and then you'll see people start to leave because they're bored and exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh my it's, god, he um, picked the bait. You know, it's great. It, it, and they were like, you know, they have to reach these undecided voters, which again, it's just amazing we're in this world and there's still undecided voters you know you don't have to reveal who you're voting for. i mean we're both gonna vote for Kamala, but if like the uh even if you were voting for trump because you were just so committed to like hey i think corporations should pay less taxes and i don't believe in abortion and you know whatever your issues were yeah the undecided voter is a hard one to really 
grasp. Yeah. yeah. But whatever. So, yeah. good debate. You know, what else did you do this weekend? So, did you watch the highlights or did you watch? Yeah, it I watched. Fact? I watched some clips once I knew that nobody. Well, I wanted to see the thing where he said everyone's eating their dog, like the Haitians are eating the, yeah. the pets. That was pretty funny. I, I still, I, mean, I watched it. I was, which I, I felt like I missed something and I was watching the entire thing. And he's yeah. like, in Springfield, they're, I mean, they're eating their dog. They're eating these people's pets. And I'm just he, like, what, he does what did this, I, what did I miss while I was watching this debate? He does this wonderful thing where you, in his brain, I think what happens is he's like, they probably told him like, Hey man, don't, we don't need to talk about the dog. I know you think that that's like, a, a hot story and gonna help you let's just not bring up the hot the dogs and cats thing but you can tell like it's like a dam in his head so he's like dancing around and he's like yeah i mean they're, they're coming in they're, they're eating dogs <laughs> like it finally bursts <laughs> they're eating the dogs and the cats and everyone's like what the fuck what where did that in his head he'd already like uh gone over the pros and cons with him it was the same thing when he said kamala wasn't black i remember watching that and you know he's like him, and he's like, yeah. She's she was, and then she she turned black, and then you're like, whoa, whoa, yeah. So it's like that's when it gets exciting when he when he has that thing where he's holding it back, holding it back, and he just can't hold it in anymore. That's so great. But, did you uh, see like? Did you, I mean, and this was the first time in any debate where the they're like the the moderators are fact checking in real time he yeah. goes off on his dog thing and they're like okay all right next question and just real quick we did reach out to the uh you know law enforcement of springfield there's no reports of people eating dogs or cats right. all right so next question come on and it was just like wow <laughs> well maybe they hey. said that but my guy heard a guy there was a guy on tv that said they were if i like, knew you were gonna like look up whether it was true or not i wouldn't have even said it <laughs> this isn't fair that's not fair that's what that's what i've been reading today is like all the republicans were like it's rigged because uh, abc was so biased with the fact check thing they they fact checked trump 30 times or whatever and they didn't fact check kamala once and it's like guys that's a bad that's bad you don't want to be bragging about the fact yeah. that your dude told the most things that could just easily because like fact checking isn't like hey abortion is wrong or abortion is right. right like that's like just you know you can't fact check that that's like what you think or my my tax plan will make you rich well there's like really no way to like fact check that right but like when you yeah. just say the haitians are rounding up people's pets and eating them like yeah they can just call the guy and be like yeah. hey is that happening and the mayor's like no you know you gotta yeah. say less shit like that yeah. 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 She, but she, yeah, because she would like be, she would say stuff, you know, oh, here's my plan. This is my plan. It's like, okay, that's her plan. Oh, I got to fact check her future plans and whatever. And then he's telling these stories about whatever. And then I also like doing the, they, he wouldn't answer the question. I mean, you know, it's politics. So they all do this. Right. Kamala did it with dodging questions, but I just love it. I would flat out, he was like, do you have any regrets of how you handled? January 6th. Well, let me tell you this. He rambles and he's like, okay. So the question was, do you have any regrets? Yes or no? And he rambles again. It's just like, yeah. I gave you a chance. There is also thing, there's this thing, and Kamala does it too. Like, like no one's allowed to ever say, you know what? I I got that one wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like they gave her a couple chances to like you because oh, you changed your stance on this, yeah. or would you have done anything different than Biden did? And she did the same thing where she's like, I got to just pivot to. Yep. Don't you think voters it, would we kill them if they said, you know what? I was I just changed my mind. I think that, so. That was bad. That That's what I thought then. And I, you know, kept reading and listening to people. And it's four years later. And now I'm I'm changing it. And I, that's yeah. my bad. I screwed that. Like, would people care? Would would we jump all I over? I think for that? so. Because I, I, when you watch these, they always think just be, you know, just say that, you know, just yeah. be a real person, but they never do. And I just feel like with politics, it's such an art. Like if just they can't. did that, the other team would somehow figure out a way to just right. rip into it. Like it's a debate skill. That I, would be funny if it was like, 
we've all been everybody's like wouldn't it be nice to have an honest politician you know wouldn't it be refreshing to have someone just tell it like it is and and then they just get on the scene and they start things saying things like yeah man i screwed that one up you know nobody's perfect i make mistakes just like you and uh, i'm gonna try my best and do it better the next time and yeah i've changed my mind on some stuff you know actually it turns out a lot of people in pennsylvania like fracking and i gotta win that state so you know yeah. go fracking fracking <laughs> school now you know and then everybody like hurt and yeah this is so refreshing and then they just lose in a landslide <laughs> <laughs> crushed like oh that's why they all lie yeah oh god I, i'm just i'm just excited for this I'm, I'm excited for it to be over even though yes. it won't i mean you know we'll get no 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 we'll it won't no end. break from politics no because yeah. it'll be the election and then now trump's created this thing where it's like there's the whole after election where you have to sweat out the actual president getting sworn in until like january no. and then after january then like immediately trump's like i'm running again i'm sure he'll be like i'm running again i, I should have won He'll be like 80. It will never say it was, Yeah, he'll say it was fake. He started out. He's saying that in the debate. He's like, well, we got to make sure these elections are fair. It's not, you know, it's not. It's like, oh, you're just planting the seeds for your fucking whiny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what it's like when they get those questions and then they just go into their answers? It's like when, like, um, comedians. Like, do you ever see Rodney Dangerfield go on Johnny Carson? Like, those old YouTube clips? Doing panel? Yeah, not doing stand-up, yeah. but doing panel. Yeah. And Johnny Carson would just be like, Hey, so uh, how's it going, Rodney? Uh, how have you been? Oh, I'll tell you how I've been. My doctor, Dr. Vinny Boom Buffs. And he just do like bits. <laughs> like, that's what the debate is. It's like they ask a question. They're not waiting for the. They're not listening to the question. They're just right. like, my turn to talk. Bang. And then they just knock out all these. Uh, yeah. Talking points or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll be excited to get to get beyond it uh one way or the other did you get my uh did i send you the video of the intro yes. of my show yes so i did a show in uh Fantastic. dodgeville wisconsin very nice people it was their first year it was a tattoo and ink place doing like an expo event their first one ever and this and she goes up and she's like all right well i'm gonna start and i was like you're gonna start i mean there's there's <laughs> literally zero people literally zero people in these chairs here yeah she's doing her intro and the staff that are in the other side are clap and i was like all righty here we go and eventually you know like 60 or 20 people showed up and it With, was fine but it yeah was, oof. that's so rough like well that's so funny because that's the way we used to start the because people always ask like what's the fewest people you've done a sh show for and i yeah. always say zero because when we used to do the, remember Bruco? Did you ever do that in Westwood in LA? The UCLA uh, no. kind of bar? Okay. So they had a room. They had comedy there like three or four nights a week. It was always like either an open mic or some bad showcase. Yeah. And on Thursdays, I think it was, um, it used to get like pretty good. Like by 10 or 1030, the bar would fill up and then people would just kind of wander in and the room would be packed and it could be like a really fun room but it always start with nobody. Like it wasn't like people were like there for the show. You had to bark them in from downstairs yeah. and no one would come in and wait for it to start. So the only way for the show to start was for a comedian to get on stage and start talking. And to then nobody. the nice, th yeah. But the nice thing to do would be like for a few comedians to sit there and pretend to be audience and like yeah. half listen at least. Yeah. And then people would come in and then they could slowly leave and then the show could get going. But sometimes, especially towards the end, like I literally would have to go up and talk to nobody. No. Just start doing a, just doing comedy to zero people. And it's very hard as much as that yeah. sounds like, well, Hey, nobody's there. It's can't be that embarrassing. It's like extra embarrassing. It's, it's worse. It, yeah. I'd rather it's, have it one person. It's, it's also, it's something because you feel people. I mean, there's people. There's people there. There are people watching you perform to nobody. You know, like right. Yeah, because there was, but there was a window. So, so it was yeah. a closed door situation, but a big window. So there, they could see some psychopath in there. Yeah, talking to a, a room of no of empty uh, chairs. 
but that was the only way they would start the show like otherwise we would just never start and there just wouldn't be a show you know yep. so i get i get your sound people's uh motives they're like nah we know we gotta start yeah they'll come start the show and they'll come and uh a handful of them did but does that does it even like so you weren't you didn't have to go on there was an opener and then by the no, time you no no that was the way it was just me it was like a oh so when me. you it was the lady introducing me i go up so when you went on stage there was no people except there for the was people? there was people like way in the back at the shops along the back wall and then once you know once i started i mean i did literally you know i had obviously i addressed it because there's the crew and there's people way far away so yeah. i did address it and people once i was on they started you know, wandering people okay. yeah like, like 10 people showed up and it ended up were, being like 20 but were you at all like nervous about that or did that bother you or were you like sweating no. it no right no, not I mean it at some point it would have in my career, but now it's just now like, it's t yeah. That's it's what I always fine. say. It's just totally fine. You're like, whatever. <laughs> I've yeah. been humiliated so many times and just like yeah. done every type of gig. This means nothing. There's, I am invincible. I had yeah. to do I did this uh thing, so I donated a show to an uh, my school's auction, like two years ago yeah and, and this guy bought it and he finally called it in for a, his 90th birthday yeah so it was a 90th birthday party in the school gym with a bunch of people some some people like my parents know from their church and you know that that was but it was like maybe a hundred people but most of them in their like either 70s older yeah fellow 90 year olds it was like 1130 in the morning. And then I get this introduction. Which you of, love. Which you love. Which actually, yeah, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> fan of. I get this introduction where it's like, oh, well, I guess like they're doing trivia. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, I guess we'll just do the comedy now. You know, it's like I'm yeah. like have food on my plate. Oh, all right. And there was a time <laughs> where that would have freaked me out. Like I would have been. So now I was still like apprehensive, like the night before I was like kind of dreading it. Cause I was like, if yeah. this goes bad, it's like my parents are there, you know, it's like, yeah. But in that moment I was like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Right. <laughs> yeah. I already bought it. You know what? Yeah. I'm fine. Those are two different things best. though. It's going to be fine. And who gives a shit? My, my thinking going into mine was like, this is going to fucking suck. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah. Even if it does, that's the thing though. Even if it sucks, it doesn't suck that bad. Yeah. Like as bad as it sucks bombing, it's not yeah. even that much like doing great. Isn't even that much better than bombing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You if I'm that one. I don't know. Really? I don't know. I'm like, okay, if you like kill, but everybody else on the show kills. Yeah. Right. So everybody feels great. Everybody yes. equally kills. And you all can just kind of agree, man, that was a great crowd. And yes. then the next night, the crowd stinks, like 15 people. And they're so tough. And everybody bombs. But you bomb. But you do like just 1% better than, than all everyone the comics. else. You show that you kind of got them in a few moments that no yeah. one else did. Yeah. Which one are you feeling better about? <laughs> That's a different, I don't know. That's a different question. That's I'm feeling better about that, but I'd rather do the one where we all kill every day. No. Oh, okay. Which one would you rather do then? The one where everyone kills. Oh, see, I think I'd rather, I feel better afterwards. So I would rather do the one where I, I, I feel, yeah, I feel better, but it's not as fun. It's more fun to kill. I Even guess if you're so. like, ah, that was, yeah, that's like a sugar high. Stuff. I that's know. just that's just a sugar rush. That's nothing. That's not like actual accomplishment. Grinding yeah. it out in the salt mines. Yeah. Like I did, I did the open mic on Tuesday and it was light. There's only like 15 yeah. people and I went up early and the first two comics like ate it. And then mm -hmm. I did one like actual bit first, just like see where they were and they were bad. Like they it was like, oh, okay. And then they I were tried bad audience. Well, they were just like 
dead you know yeah. like it took yeah. a few real punchlines for them to like give me anything and then then i just but i still went into like the new stuff or the yeah. things i wanted to try and yeah. then when that stuff worked i felt like way better about it than if like it was a hot crowd and it worked you know yeah yeah i don't even know how we got talking about this i did the open mic last night in madison and i was like i want to make sure i want to i want to do all all new i don't repeat anything i've ever you know because i yeah. just like i there's no need and and it was not my greatest <laughs> it was rough i mean i yeah. did stuff that was like you know brand new and i was like where you get nothing and you're like oh they don't ah I've been doing this so long and yeah. how have I not figured out that that's not a punchline? You know what I mean? And it's not well, until that. you say it and there is nothing. It's not like they're ignoring. It's not like they don't like it. It's that they're like, okay, yeah. And yeah, then... they're, they're, they're rooting for you to come yeah. up with a punchline. Yeah. <laughs> Surely he's got something else. No, no. Oh, that was yeah. it. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. I did that last night too. I tried, I did one new thing that kind of worked, but I did this other thing where I have no punchline for it, but it's just so funny to me. It's just like my dad, if you walk with my dad, like my mom and dad, he doesn't want to go for walks, but if he ever does, he'll just immediately end up like three blocks ahead of us. Yeah. Like he just walk, like, where are you going? Like, it just drives me crazy. It's yeah. So I like talk about it a little bit and like try to be funny about it, but I'm like, there's no, there's no bit here. <laughs> it's just this. I was like, that, did any of your dads do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're telling the story and in your head, you're like, oh, no, I'm going to yeah. have to just end this with. Yeah, yeah, I guess you have to know him. I do this thing when that happens where I'm like, well, that's the whole bit. And then I just, they usually laugh. That's like a decent saver. I was like, that's it. That's the whole joke. I don't know. Yeah. That's it. The end. Uh, uh, yeah all right all right all right i have a question for you this is a pre-topic sure, please discussion. if if you won the lottery okay you won like the mega millions yeah uh how much money would you want it to be like how much if you could pick the amount that you win what would you pick you know it's funny the number that popped in my head what this shows you what kind of broke bitch i am but I was, I was like $30 million. Why? Why is that a broke? Why is that showing that you're a broke? Because why not 10 billion? That's why it's a question because 10 billion would be. Why didn't 10 nightmare. billion pop into my head? And that would be, I would, I wouldn't want 10 billion. I wouldn't want 10 billion. I mean, maybe I, what about 300 million, 300 million maybe is what I should have said. Yeah, that's sure. I'd do that. You would do 300 million. I would do, yeah, I would do, I, you know what? I I don't need, I would do 200 million. I don't need <laughs> all that. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I don't want to be one of these rich pricks <laughs> in the $300 million club. Yeah. Just a nice, yeah. humble 200 millionaire. <laughs> uh, what, what, like, what is the, you're worried if you had too much money, then what you would? Yeah, if you say a hundred billion, everyone fucking hates you. You, 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 you're obligated to just solve every problem in the world because you yeah. basically have the ability to, and you're just so busy making sure that, you know, not feeling bad about yourself. Cause like, Oh, I, what am I going to, you know, this money's going to go nowhere. If I just sit on it, I got to feed everyone. I got to give it to this. I got to, I know, you know I but if know. you had like, let's say you had like a hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you had $300 million, yeah. that 300 million is so much less than a hundred billion. Like I yep. don't even, I can't even wrap my head around how much less money that is than a hundred billion. Yep. But if you had $300 million, I feel like you have the same pressure to solve the world's pro like everyone you know and who knows of you you're going to be like the richest person they've ever heard of yeah or no or have ever met or that i or yeah, aware connected to connected to yeah 
So they're yeah. going to still expect you to solve the world's problems. If you have a hundred billion dollars, you can just actually solve the world's problems and then still have like billions of dollars left over. Yeah. I, I just, uh, what's the most money you could win in Powerball where no one even like, they're knows. like, well, that wouldn't change his life enough for me to go ask him for money. So I can't ask him for money. Like even your closest you who, relatives. like friends, friends, relatives. Yeah. I don't know. A million. So I if you want a million dollars, no one's coming up to you and be like, Hey, Johnny, I got this idea for a new skateboard. All I need is like $10,000 to get it off the ground. And I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. I'd be disappeared. <laughs> it could a million, a fun. million dollars. You're <laughs> off the map. You're just gone. Yeah. I don't think so. Million think dollars. You, you know I, what I, I think? I'd move to Appleton and hide. <laughs> Appleton. <laughs> 90 Appleton. miles away. Appleton has a non-extradition treaty. The uh you know what you would be doing if what? I gave you a million dollars? You'd be doing that same gig walking out there in front of no people. You're right. Cuz you're addicted. Just I like know. I am. That's the thing. Yeah, no matter no matter how much money it's like, well if it doesn't come with you know, the notoriety of making people buy tickets because my name's on it. Right. It's not going to change my, your attitude or, and your lifestyle. Yeah. Really? You're still doing all the work at home. Like that's in a comedian's life who has kids. Yeah. That is like the work. Yeah. It's like your kids and then yeah. the managing yeah. and, you know, like mowing the lawn and dealing with house stuff. Like that's like the nine to five. You yeah. know, the the comedy is just sort of like, that's the vacation. <laughs> that's yeah. the time. Yeah, off. it is. That's you know? true. They say, they say, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. What do you love? I love being away from my family. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried that on stage? No. That's great. <laughs> it's like, just like, yeah, you got to travel a lot for this job and. You know, I love comedy. They say, you do. <laughs> like, if you did that after all the stuff about your kids, I would, I would kill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I would just keep doing, I think I just, I might stop doing cruise ships, but I just keep doing comedy. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I, that's what we got to talk about. Maybe we can talk about that in post-show banter. We got to start talking. You got you to give me some pointers on when I got to start putting these ads out for the Aztec Theater in Shawnee. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because me and, me and Tyler Bo have one coming up, too. We're going to do two weeks ahead of time. Oh, that's when you're going to start promoting Start it? running the ads, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So Yeah, I got time. It's, a, yeah. it's a, like October 25th. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. That. Uh, oh yeah, you get to meet old Zach favorite. Yeah, we've been going back and forth on the emails. He was asking me, he's like, "Are you gonna?" That really helped when Andrew did his show. He promoted. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it yet because it's two months away." Yeah, but did you make your own ads, like the images? Well, I used a. Uh... Uh, like a comedy clip. Oh, okay. You know, you take yeah. like a reel that's already, I can, I can show you how I did it, you know, yeah. or how All I right. do it. And then you, you pick a, a video that's already up, you know, on your mm -hmm. Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. And then you just run that and then you, it'll change the text for you around it. And then to add the link to like, click, okay. you know, to buy tickets. So nice. Yeah. I'm going go to I'm gonna go back. Out. I'm going back to Wichita in November to do that Vorshay's Lounge. Did I tell you that? Oh, already? okay. Yeah. yeah. You told me about that. See how that goes. Nice. Um. All right. Should we get to topics? Let's get to topics. Friends? Yeah. Who's going for, or do you want to talk football? Oh, I got to make my pick. Okay. Let's yes. announce because we're so, so to update everybody on last week's, here's the standings. Johnny, 
pick the Packers. Yeah. Oh and one. Oh and one. Who'd they play again? Can't remember the spread. You did not cover the spread. Uh, it was a two and a half point spread. I remember that. Was it the Jets or the Eagles? It was the the Eagles. Eagles. And you lost, and your quarterback got hurt. Bad, bad. Yeah, that was bad. Like with five seconds left or some shit. Then I picked the Seahawks. The Seahawks were favored by six and a half points. They won the game by six points. So I got Wait screwed. You picked the Seahawks. No, you didn't. You picked the, I thought you picked the Dolphins. Oh, I did? Yeah. I thought I picked the Seahawks with our, did we text it? Ah, dang it. Am I about to give you a victory? No, I think I did pick the Dolphins, and they also didn't cover the spread. They won. Oh, but the they, they won. They just didn't cover. They didn't the cover the spread. That's okay, right. Yeah. So we're both zero and one. Is the wrap? Okay. Is so you're looking at two big losers. So this week we're getting back to our roots. And Johnny, yep. go ahead and my, give the people your pick. Okay, my game is on Sunday. I don't even know how. Like I had a hard time. I was too embarrassed to text you because I don't even know where to go to be like, hey, what are my choices for this week's games? But I figured it out, and I picked. The 49ers over the Vikings, but they have to cover, isn't it like a five and a half point spread or something? Yeah, I think you got it. Let me look, let me look up. We're gonna go off this um app I have. So, so that means that the it is 49ers... a five, five point spread. So the for the 49ers have to win by five to tie or six to for you to win. For me to win. Okay. Yeah. So with ties, what are we counting that as? Just a loss? You got to win. No, no. A tie is a tie. No. So at the end of the season, it's just like a regular league. You know, if you tied, that'll you'll be like a half a point. You could be five, four and one or something at the end of the year. And whoever has a better record wins. So right now you're zero and one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's my game. Mine is 49ers over Vikings on Sunday. Okay. And yours? I'm going to take the Denver Broncos. They are underdogs. They're two and a half point underdogs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Broncos versus Steelers. Yes. So the Broncos. Uh, so what's the thing? How you have to win by what? Or you don't even have to win. No, just have to... they just have to lo- win or lose by less than three points. Lose by less than three. Okay. All right. All right. Nice. Exciting. Oh, When's your it. game? Is your Got game Sunday? It. Yeah, my game. That game Sunday afternoon. The Seahawks play in the morning at the ten a.m. slate. The Seahawks. That's that's none of our bets. So no, no. That's just the game I'll be. Oh, okay. Watching. You'll be watching. Okay. In fact, I'll be in the. I'll be like three hours away Saturday night. I'm going to get up like at 6.30 just to drive back in time to make sure I watch the Seahawks game. Oh, that's so weird. I know. That was so you frustrating would, watching that game. You would just drive back that night probably. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And then I would sleep in and miss the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just didn't like that feeling of like knowing I don't care, but somehow I was like, why is there – I feel like I'm possessed huh. by – anger and i don't it's not real i don't have this but i'm mad that was the perfect response i was so pissed i was like fuck this shit i hate this you're like yeah now you're sounding like a sports fan that's the sports fan coming out we're creating one a hateful vengeance you'll start punching drywall here pretty soon and be like oh my god johnny calm down it's just a game it's not a game this is my life understand i made a bet with andrew (laughs) <laughs> the podcast yeah uh i 50 was bucks, so... right? We're reconfirming 50 bucks oh yeah i forgot we even had money yeah 50 bucks at the end of the year yeah end of the season oh we, yeah when does this end are we in preseason or is that the season started <laughs> no, no the season has started okay so this is like for the season so once yeah. the just once the regular season's over it's over. or we could go into the playoffs it's uh, well we can decide We've got when does the playoff start? Like, you know, December, January. January. Okay. How long is the playoffs? Like a month? Yeah. Like the Super Bowl's in February. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we got to, no, we got to decide ahead of time. Because if you're down like five points, yeah. You can't be like, no, I think we need to include the, uh, and I'll be like, no, I want to win now. All right. What about this? We'll do, 
will play for the season, the regular season. Okay. And when the playoffs start, we can decide whether we want to do another round. Okay. And bet yeah. another fifty dollars, or maybe even yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it and fun. You'll have the, All right. You'll have the itis by then. Yeah. <laughs> What's you the won't itis? even care about a little fifty dollar bet. You'll have like. A thousand dollars a day going on DraftKings, just like shut the fuck up, Andrew. I've got a got a three team parlay right here, second horse races and stuff. Yeah, this is how it starts. Um, okay, I love it. Fun football, fun, talk. fun. All right, I I you know what? I'm gonna go first, topic All wise, right. because that leads me into my topic beautifully. Oh, which okay, is football. I think mm -hmm. any team, basketball, football, baseball, hockey, whatever, but football made me think of it because they're the most egregious offenders. Yeah. Every every team should only have one captain. Oh, now this will be interesting. I'm not sure what a captain does. <laughs> okay. So you're not familiar with like the fr like the term team captain? Um, when you're at he, recess, he was, we had that, but he was not, captain like, of the football team. He was captain of the basketball. Yeah, I heard team. of that. I guess I never really thought about it. Okay. So that's a thing where they were, the team will vote on captains and the captain is they like get a call if it's heads or tails. Yeah, 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 exactly. They go out there, uh, with the referee and the other captains and they pick who goes first and they wear a little C on their shirt and then they get like, you know, they're like in charge. They're like leader. They're the leader okay. of the team. Um, and okay. it's voted on by the rest of the usually the way we did it in high school is you'd vote on it the team would all vote for captains don't you but feel like, like the the quarterback is just always kind of the real well, captain yeah and then also it's stupid because they have like four of them you can't what? have yeah there's like a special teams captain and a defensive captain and an offensive captain and blah blah I've seen like as many as four captains, sometimes five walk out there. Like one, there is one captain. There's got to be one person in charge. That's the only way that has any validity. There should be one captain on any team ever. How do they decide which captain goes out? And if they all go four... out, sometimes they hold hands. Did you know that? Oh my goodness. I no, I didn't even know what a captain was. No, I didn't know sometimes, that in this. I remember this from high school. They like to show unity, they would hold hands walking out the four captains. They should hold each other's penises. <laughs> I bet that would get you if, guys if think change, if they change the rule to that, there you you'd get your way. There'd be one captain immediately. You guys think you're unified. Watch this. <laughs> this is four people grabbing each other's cocks, shuffling <laughs> out there. It's kind of hard to walk whoa, this way. Whoa. But... We gotta do it in a circle. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I for sure think that's uh yeah, I, I yeah. I'm down with that. I think that's so silly. when you played high school sports, you didn't you didn't ever vote on captains? No, yeah, I, I, I didn't play high school sports. I was too intimidated. I was like, well, this is oh, like the real right. deal. That's when I just got into theater and I, I I ran cross country until the day before our first meet, and then I quit. They didn't have a cross country captain. Maybe. I don't know. Oh. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. Yeah. Back then, that's why as I... it were. Yeah. You just kept that's on a... running. Is that how you quit cross country? They were jogging back. They're about to go into the locker rooms. You just kept on jogging. No, I, I'm out of here. Honestly... I'm going home. <laughs> Where'd Johnny go? I don't know. He just didn't stop. He just kept going. I used to have a bit about it, but it was, it was true. I was so bad. It took me forever to like, I mean, I'm still not fast at all. I just do it. But like in cross country, I was so, I'm so slow. I was literally the second slowest person on the whole high school cross country team. And when I would get to the locker room, I would be, I would, I would have the audacity to make fun of the kid that's not there yet. <laughs> I like come in as they're getting out of the showers. Like, hey, have you guys seen Stoll? I don't think he's back yet. Oh my God, he's still out there. <laughs> he's the only <laughs> one behind me. That's so funny. Ugh. Uh, 
but that's really all you have to do in cross country. You either want to be first. There is no yeah. point in being your first, second or third. That's all that matters. And then you just don't want to be last. So you're actually giving like the best amount of effort. Sounds like. That's right. Yeah, exactly. How could you be slow running? You have such long legs. I don't know. I'm a very inefficient runner. I don't think I do it coordinated. I told you when I was running the Chicago marathon marathon, people would just like give me tips as they're running alongside me. Like, Whoa, Hey, relax your shoulder. You're carrying too much weight. I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I don't remember you telling me that. That's yeah. hilarious. Like, it's one thing if you're playing like pickleball, they're like, hey, you know, pick up your elbow and then you'll get a clear or your golf thing. They're like, you know, with your backswing, you want to make it come all the way through. Running is the most instinctual human. <laughs> you're just supposed to know how to do it. No one has to teach you. All right. It'd be like having a blinking coach. Like, hey, man, you know, every once in a while, your eyes are getting dried out. You got to close them quick and open them. <laughs> you don't want to like leave them closed for a long time. You want to just blink. Cause then you'll start bumping into stuff. So you got to yeah. open them back up. Yeah. Cause you can't see when they're closed. So you just really quick, like boom. And then your eyes, you know, won't dry out. Yeah. That's really, really funny. Do you do that as a bit? I can, I'm just coming up with bit. I have, I use, I have a bit about running the marathon and stuff. And I think I mentioned that once, but I think I forgot about it. Yeah. I should. Yeah. You should do something about, about someone, them all coaching you up how to run. <laughs> like what is wrong with me? I don't know how to run. I like, I guess because my brother said the same thing where like, I get my shoulders are too high and my arms are too also, high or something. I don't think know. how bad you are at running when they can't resist giving you coaching when they're in the most strenuous activity of their life and they're still like you know what i gotta take a moment here and help yeah. this guy out even though i'm in the middle of a marathon right. i'm clearly this this moron thought he's good enough at this. running it's so bad hang on i'm gonna change this guy's life he doesn't know it's how to not run for lack of practice clearly he's running a lot yeah he's just like not getting any better at it yeah i'm trying to imagine you like how it could be so wrong like your shoulders are up and I you're don't... sort of waddling I... <laughs> are you going backwards I'm not a moron <laughs> are you are you turning your neck and just running backwards is that what huh? i don't even know Johnny, it's like toes carrying first. my arms instead of just letting him swing or something but I look at other people, I'm like, they're doing it. And then my brother's like, no, they're not. That's normal. You're doing it weird. I'm like, I don't that's feel the like the worst because then you get in your head about it. Yeah. And then I do. you start like trying to running like <laughs> you think a human being runs. I think like a robot. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, you're you're screwed. Yeah. Oh, oh well. Well, but you still run a lot, so kudos to you. Yeah. Are you tr yep. you're tracking your on the Nike thing still? Yep, yep. I'm not I'm not quite in the I'm not as high as I was. I did a hundred miles in a month a couple months ago. Wow. But now it's around now it's around a little over twenty five. Hundred inefficient miles. Yes. <laughs> Probably like, during myself. I'm it's like, like you know, like it, not having run. You think of a car driving a hundred miles, but that's not Johnny. That's like a hundred Oregon trail miles. That's a hundred, a covered wagon pulled by a, a oxen that got stuck in the mud. That's a hundred hard miles. Yeah. I'm like driving a hundred miles with the emergency brake on. <laughs> yeah, that's another bit. It was a great line. I'm going hey, to have to re-listen to this and go through I'm it. To, and... I'm writing your whole act here. I mean, no. you kind of wrote that. No, that's what I need is I need someone to just listen and be like, hey, you should say that on stage. Like, oh, okay, I know. Yeah. That's the best thing comics can do. Comics are way better at that than they are at like actually giving tags. Every time yeah. a comic's given me a tag, it's probably like one for, I don't know, 50. Yeah. Maybe. But when they go, oh, do you talk about that on stage? You, you should do that. Write that down. Write that, you know, that <laughs> yeah. is always better. I know because yeah. every your head, time it your... happens, you're just like, oh, my God, have I I've been a comedian for 25 years. How have I not trained my brain to to hear that myself? I know. I know. 
whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, okay. All right. What do you need backup on, Johnny? All right. Here's what I need backup on. I'm, I'm guessing you don't even you don't even use a mouse for your computer, do you? <laughs> no. no. Well, here's what I need. Here's what I need backup on. This is the Apple mouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look look at where the charging port is it's on the bottom yeah yeah it should be on the back so you can yeah. use it while you're charging it now for our listeners uh i just like you to know that i called it before we started recording and i told andrew i have the worst topic we have had in all what 200 and what number are we on i don't know uh I just I can't I can't even get past your opening line. It's like I'm guessing you don't even have a mouse. Like you're already like this is so irrelevant to anybody. <laughs> Do you think Apple did that because they were just like punishing you for still using a mouse? They're like we think it's so stupid that you even want a mouse, so this is the way you're going to have to charge it. I, uh, that makes sense, but no, I think it's that they are so obsessed with the sexiness and sleekness that if uh, they had the jack on the back, they'd be like, ah, it's just, it's, it's not perfect. There's a hole but, where that should be smooth and seamless because you, the shape of this is just like so perfect. And if right. you add the port where you can see it, so they're like, yeah, we'd rather it be inconvenient and look sexy than practical. You know what I just thought of is like if they're so obsessed with these charging port shit not showing, they have these wire these um wireless chargers now. You know, like mm -hmm. sometimes you can just set your phone on it and there's no yeah. cords and it charges. Yeah. yeah. For a, isn't that like perfect for a mouse? You're using it on a table all the time anyway. So they should just make a mouse pad that is a charging oh my pad. gosh and then you'd never have to charge it you're gonna have to edit this out so nobody steals that idea wow i'm sure they've thought of it they just but then like also this is where i'm gonna sound like an old man but was it so bad having a little cord that ran into your computer you know with a mouse like i don't remember having any problems with that no not at all yeah that's what i'm saying like they they have a problem with it. They have the problem, not us. And even like you wouldn't even have to do that. It wouldn't have to be a permanent like, oh, it has to be attached just when you're charging it. I only have to, I have to charge my mouse once every, what, three months because it requires so little. Can I ask you a question? There's probably no way for you to know this. But if you charged it, if it were charging, would it work while it's while it's plugged in? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because I, assume, yeah, I because have this the, the thing is right here. It's a laser that detects the movement. Oh, okay. If you had it at the edge of the table like this, you, you could, could still, that, yeah, but you can't because of the cords on the bottom. Cause I have this razor. It's the Norelco one touch. Oh, and if you, I really like it, but the only thing about it that I hate is that you charge it, you know? Yeah. If you're, if it's plugged in, it doesn't work. Oh, it has to be unplugged. It you can't be, be charging it while using it. So if it dies while you're like mid beard, you have to plug it in and then go like do something for 10 minutes and then come back and finish shaving. You can't uh, just finish shaving. It's the yeah, worst. That's, that's lame. And there's nothing worse than like your electric razor going out on you as you're shaving. Cause then it just starts pulling it and yep. you always like, it's the most painful thing. So yeah and that's wow. the thing is i never i never charge my my beard trimmer until it dies on me like i never yeah. think to be like oh i should charge it tonight just so it doesn't yeah. you wait until it's dead yeah uh, but why wouldn't something work while it's plugged in yeah that's dumb right maybe it's not like there's two ways like the mouse would because it's like oh it has a constant source but maybe the razor is just like, it's like a dead car battery. It's like, well, we need some time to 
to get some juice into the thing. It no, can't it, pull it, the power from the I've wall. Tr- I've tried it. If it's completely charged and I plug it in, it doesn't. Oh, it still it. won't work? Yeah. Oh, well, that's dumb. Yeah. It's like Should a throw it away. safety thing. Maybe if it becomes too powerful, they're like, nah, you don't want Maybe that. they think people will shave their assholes in the shower and they'll like yes. get electrocuted. You know what? Now that I'm you say that, that was in the instruction booklet. Oh, we okay. Don't I thought let maybe. it work because of the asshole shaving. It's the asshole shaving thing. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Well, that's well, good for them. Good for them. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Hey, get up. Good app. What a good app. Oh, my gosh. Good We're back Get you in back the in the saddle here, back Isn't at the it homestead. Better? God, it's so much better. No delay. Great. Uh, yeah, great Wi-Fi. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, you know, we go out. We do comedy on the road. What do we What do we got coming up? I'm going to be uh, – let's, let's go all the way. I, don't, I forget when this is coming up. I'm going to go all the way to October 5th. I'm going to be in Coos Bay, Oregon at the Egyptian Theater with Tyler Bow. Tyler show, Bow, former guest. The aforementioned, uh, it's one of our you know, self-produced classics. We're going to be running ads and stuff. So if you know anybody on the Oregon coast that uh, wants to come to a show, send them our way. Coos Bay, Egyptian Theater, October 5th. Oh, lovely. I... Just booked yesterday. Uh, I'll be opening for Michael Che at Comedy on State. Oh, all right. I believe that's this. This it's. I think it's already sold out. But this Thursday, two shows, the nineteenth, Comedy on State. But then uh, I do want to plug Green Bay on the twenty seventh, Crandon, Wisconsin, the twenty eighth, and then the Jukebox Comedy Club the following weekend, the first weekend of October. Jukebox Comedy Club Friday, Saturday. Milwaukee Laughing Tap that Sunday the 6th for the closing show of the Milwaukee Comedy Festival. Best of the fest. Hey, thank you everybody for listening to The Cavalry. Cavalry.